you're watching Weekend Saturdays here at Backyard Tech. Yesterday for Fridays here at the Backyard Tech channel, Old Mate decided to take a different tack with the operating system for the 21 and a half inch 2007 model Apple iMac. And I went ahead and installed Linux Mint 19.2 Tina XFCE 32 bit. And I've got to tell you, I'm pretty impressed. Now we haven't looked at Linux Mint for a while and after finding out about it yesterday and how good it was, I thought today it's system setup and product review time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, let's have a sticky beak at Linux Mint 19.2 Tina XFCE. Linux. Maybe Unix. Windows. This is the Backyard Tech System Setup and Product Review. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. You are watching Weekend Saturdays here at the Backyard Tech Channel and it is System Setup and Product Review time uh, here. And um, this comes off the back of yesterday's success with Linux Mint XFCE 32-bit um, 19.2 Tina. Now, I'm not a major fan of Linux Mint. I much prefer MX, Open Man Driver, etc. But I'm pretty impressed with how well, how fast, how responsive, and how good 19.2 Tina with XFCE looks. And I was going to have a bit of a sticky beak at it yesterday, but let's face it, old mate's camera skills make anyone completely and utterly dizzy. And if you're feeling under the weather this morning, it's not going to do you any good. So. For weekend Saturdays here at the Backyard Tech Channel, let's give Linux Mint 19.2 Tina XFCE, the Backyard Tech Channel treatment, gonna have a sticky beak at it. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so, standard test bench scenario, 4 gig of RAM, dual core CPU, 120 gig hard drive. Let's, uh, let's go to the console. And let's start it. I gotta say, I am really impressed with Mint XFCE. And I'm not a massive fan for Linux Mint. Now I know that sounds ridiculous because Ferran OS is sort of based upon, based on Linux Mint. But as a distro, I'm not a Linux Mint fan. So, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Straight into 1920 by 1080. That's all right, isn't it? Oh. Hasn't really got the mouse properly, which is a little bit of a concern. Right there. Bit off putting with the two mouse cursors, isn't it? <laughs> I've got to say though, it, it's absolutely flying on the little iMac. Continue. This one I won't have to do anything with the uh, disk partitioning because obviously the hypervisor in itself is already running a UFI platform, so. done it again and muted it. 
I need to get rid of that hotkey. <laughs> anyway. Oh, you guys saw all that anyway, so it doesn't matter if it was muted. Now, just to um, answer a question from yesterday's video, my dear friend over there in North Carolina, Data Pioneer, why didn't I go to Voyager 32 bit? Simple reason GNOME is too heavy for that iMac. Um, Voyager, by definition, on an old CPU like that, and you've got to remember it's a 2007 iMac, it's too slow. Um, with Linux Mint pulling 250 meg and then I open Firefox to monitor the network and it jumps up to 400 meg that's a hell of a lot lighter than Voyager could have been even though Voyager's on Debian um, the thing is GNOME is too heavy for that computer now if it was a 27 inch it would be a different story it's a newer computer it's two years, two and a half years newer than the 21 inch. It's got a newer Intel Core 2 Duo than the 21 inch. The 21 inch is basically the same CPU that the MacBook's got in it. So the reason I didn't go to Voyager was because GNOME 3 is just too heavy. Um, and I don't need... Voyager's got too much stuff in it. Whereas Linux Mint, I've only installed, I actually uninstalled a heap of stuff on it. And I've got it down to about 230 odd meg now in idle. So that's probably the best way of doing it. Voyager's a nice OS, but it's just, it's too, GNOME 3 was just too heavy for it. So. Here we go. Let me get that out of the road a moment. What we might do to save video time is uh, we'll stop the video here and when we get closer to the end, we'll come back. You're watching old mates, Backyard Tech. All right, the other half just needed a word because she's off to that rave reunion um, thing tonight. So, all right, well, this is done. So let's restart it. If it restarts. There we go. Oh, I can't even spell my name. Have a look at how I spelled backyard. <laughs> oh. B A K C Y A R D. I'm not doing too good, am I? All right. So, oh yeah, the mouse is tracking a bit better now, which is good. First off, let's get this display set up. Right. That's interesting, I can't change that display. Just let me try something quickly, can you? That's a bit better. <laughs> it now fits. Okay, so let me just shrink myself down a little bit. And move.
move myself up here. Okay, so let's have a sticky peek at what you get. And as I said, I've got to be honest, it's actually really nice. So, pretty much you get your standard Linux Mint applications. All right, so we've got Archive Manager, which they use for zip files, etc. We've got Calculator, we've got Disks, we've got Document Viewer, Font Image Viewer, Logs, all that type of stuff. Um, you can see there. Um, graphics, you get GIMP picks, which is interesting. So you get two um, photo things or picture things, as well as obviously Simple Scan, which just about is in every Linux distro these days. Interwebs, pretty much standard. Um, interesting, the uh, icon they use for Firefox, which is definitely different. You get um, pretty much standard. Uh, multimedia obviously you can add more to it as you need uh, there's that um, settings we'll go in and have a look at all that just in just a moment and obviously all your software sources synaptics in there and system reports but this is what intrigued me all right Jeez, my internet's slow. <laughs> okay. This is what I want you to have a look at. Now, look at the memory being used. Less than 10% of the RAM. Now, this is a 64-bit OS. It's XFCE. It's Linux Mint, which Mint used to be fairly heavy. If you run Mint with GNOME, it's going to be really heavy because GNOME's heavy. But look at that, 308, less than 10% of the RAM, right? Just 9.9, 9 9.8% of the RAM is being used. I mean, that is light as, isn't it? Um, so, you know, I mean, it... it Voyager can't get that low. Now, Voyager is a beautiful op operating system, don't get me wrong, but I cannot get it under that much RAM. Um, so you can see there, 82 tasks, 115 threads, one running, load averages are almost non-existent. Um, it is just so nice and light. It really is nice and light. Um, so we'll go in... Um, full LibreOffice package, as we know, you've got a uh, dictionary there. No PDF viewer, you'd have to get one. Uh, we've obviously got typical Linux simple firewall. Um, you've got your preferred applications configuration as well. Settings editor, settings manager. So pretty much, you know, oh, I've knocked the mic again. Pretty much everything you can think of there, uh, including XFC, terminal workspaces, Bluetooth compatibility, and I've got to tell you, the Bluetooth on it is really easy to configure. Now, I haven't seen a Bluetooth configuration system that easy, all right, in a long time. Software sources, update manager, software manager, all that type of stuff, your login window, um, driver manager, all sorts of stuff here. This is just... I think for once, Mint may have just got it right. Um, it is extremely responsive. All right, now, if you go and download Linux Mint 19.2 now, all right, uh, before you run your updates or anything, now, as, you, as we know, and I've, I've mentioned this in the past, when you download a Linux and go and install it, one of the first things after you've had a bit of a sticky beak of what you get out of the box, you really need to run your updates. Um, you end up with Firefox 6801, so it's a little bit behind. We're on 69 now. Uh, multimedia VLC, out of the box you get 308. Everything just works, all right? 
I've I got to say, I, I'm not a fan of Mint, but this version, XFCE, seems to be really good. And, uh, I mean, it just, it works. And this is the thing. Now, the other thing that's good too, and this is what I was pretty impressed with when I bought it up on the iMac. It's already got the network. It got the network faster than any other Linux machine I know at the moment. Even, and this is, this will, um, check this out. Um, straight in now I'm not going to go in but it, it it's very responsive and I've got to say even though Mint which is a fork of Ubuntu with the XFCE desktop this thing flies now you've got to remember I've only got this on a dual core i5 alright so it's only using two cores of a core i5 it's only got four gig of RAM and it is flying you know you're not waiting around so I'm I am very very happy and I mean look I've had people wonder what how do I what am I doing with the XFCE launcher let me show you okay this is how I set up set it up because I like these options at the bottom of the application menu I always and that this is just personal preference for me all right I always keep them at the bottom like that um, and you can see there you know I mean, everything is just we can go to normal and you see there it's a bit easier to read <laughs> especially if you're blind as a bat like me um, I always do this with the clock too Because that's just that's just how I like my clocks. So I gotta say, now this is the 64-bit version. I've got the 32-bit on the iMac, and it is great. I mean, it is super responsive. So there we go. Linux Mint 19.2 Tina XFCE, and it is just you know it's obviously LibreOffice. If I was going to I'm, uh, this may end up out on ESXi, or I may just leave it on Proxmox as one of my permanent Proxmox ones. Um, you get LibreOffice by default, which we pretty much knew that would happen. You've got a backup tool there. Disk usage analyzer is accurate. Network config. You've got printers, software manager, Synaptics in there as well. And you can see we can get all sorts of stuff out of Synaptic. Um, yes, so there's Synaptic, there's Zero AD and all that type of game stuff. Um, I believe Steam will install into this at the moment, and I think it will still install into the 32-bit mode as well, uh, which is good. There's plenty of backwards compatibility. The one thing I do want to have a look at, which we often look at, because as we've seen, as Linux has developed, the etc. folder has become massive. <laughs> it doesn't matter what version of Linux you're looking at. The etc. folder is huge these days. There's more and more stuff. Like there's DKMS in there. Dbus is all in there. Cups is now in there. I mean, there even your HP drivers are in there. So, there we go. Linux Mint 19.2 Tina XFCE 64-bit. And uh, I've, I've got to say, I'm very impressed. Um... Now, one thing I did over on the iMac, which actually improved updating it, and I will probably do it here, is switching to a local mirror. Okay, now, um, where did I go? Where did I go? Where did I go? I think... 
I'm using Evo Wise for a lot of my Linux distros, uh, Debian based stuff as well. And the Bionic one, I pulled from, if I can find it, it may not be here. That one I think is the best one because that was the fastest one. So that's what I did. And it made updating the iMac much, much faster. Um, I've found that CDN.EvoWise has been great for updating both Debian systems, which is great, and then changing the Bionic mirror to here in Australia has been much faster. I've even done it with Ferrum. So, there we go. But, now, obviously, your snapshots, I would recommend if you are going to muck around with it, do a backup of your initial setup before you start screwing with it. I should have done that with LX4. I have not taken a snapshot of LX4, so... A new version of Update Manager is available. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to redo my LX4. You can see how much faster this is now. Um, even though old mate's internet's running like a dog. Now, once you have had a bit of a sticky beak out of the box, you'll note that there is a lot of updates to do. I would recommend you do those updates as soon as possible so you can maximize the usability and the features from X Linux Mint XFCE. So there we go. I'll leave a link in the description below for other people to check it out. Stick around. Plenty more coming up. Have a good one. Cheers. Thank you.